שלום, שלום לכולכם. אנחנו כאן באולם רקנטי במוזיאון תל אביב לאומנות. אנחנו אה, בתחרות הבינלאומית לפסנתר ה-17 על שם ארתור רובינשטיין. ואני רוצה לבקש מכולכם, בכל לשון של בקשה, לכבות טלפונים כבר עכשיו, לחלוטין, מסכים לא מוארים, תתנתקו, זה מאוד מומלץ. בעיקר חשוב למתחרים שלנו כי רמת הריכוז שנדרשת להם לנגן ולתת לכם את המיטב שלהם היא עצומה. אז אנא, כבדו אותם וכולנו נהנה. היום השמיני לתחרות, השני בשלב השני, שישה עשר פסנתרנים שעלו מן השלב הראשון מתמודדים עכשיו, שמענו כבר שישה, היום לפנינו עוד שישה. בשלושה מקצים, הכל מספרים. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The 17th Arthur Rubinstein International Competition, day eight. Day two of stage two. Yesterday we listened to six pianists. Today we'll listen to six more in three sessions. מחר, אחרי נגינת הפסנתרן האחרון, אחר הצהריים התכנסו השופטים לבחור את ששת העולים לגמר ובערב בערך בחמש וחצי יוכרזו כאן שמותיהם. מחר. Tomorrow after the very last recital. כן, אני, I'm with you. Please be quiet. Let this be loud. So tomorrow after the last performance the members of the jury will vote and decide who the six finalists are, and the jury, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman, Aryeh Vardi. From Israel in the USA, Vice Chair, Yochevet Kaplinski. From Poland, Vice Chair, Katarzyna Popova-Zidron. From Israel, Taisir Elias. From Canada and Germany, Yanina Fialkovska. From Japan, Noriko Ogawa. From United Kingdom, Ronan O'Hora. From USA, Robert Levin. From USA and Bulgaria, Emil Naumov. From China, Shauhan Wang. From Israel, Asaf Zohar. The junior jury, השופטים הצעירים שלנו, שופטי המחר, from Israel, Dani Dvorkin. Noah Kapeliushnik. Lior Lifshitz. Ophir Peres. Amir Ron, from Canada, Vivian Chen, and from Ukraine, Tetiana Donets. And if there is no doubt about it, all of them are psantranim mechunanim. The first person of the first day of today, I remember you again, Dmama, Alexandra Stichkina, from Greece, she's 19 years old. The first piece she will play is Karl Maria von Weber, Piano Sonata No. 1 in C major, Opus 24. The program continues with Messiaen from Vin Regard sur l'Enfant Jésus, No. 6, Par lui tout a été fait, mitoch 20 mabatim al Yeshu Hatinok, mispar 6, hakol naasa beyadav. Then Chopin, Vals in A minor, opus 34, number two. And the last, I think it's one of the most popular pieces played in the competition. Après une lecture de Dante, Fantasia Quasi Sonata, from Année de Pèlerinage, book two. L'achar criá be Dante, Fantasia Quasi Sonata, mitoch akerech asheni shel shanim shel alia l'regel. Kablu et Alexandra Stichkina.
אנחנו יוצאים להפסקה, אתם יכולים להציץ בחנות המוזיאון, יש שם מזכרות מאוד יפות מהתחרות לרכישה, ומעבירים כעת את השידור לשיחה נוספת בסדרת השיחות שלנו על מוסיקה ותחרויות מוסיקה בגלריית מיזנה בלומנטל, הפעם ירון גוטפריד, בבקשה. היי, אני ירון גוטפריד, אני קונדקטור, קומפוזר ופיאניסט. I'm also the headmaster of the School of Music at Ono Academic College. And um, I'm fortunate that uh, my work, La Folia, was chosen to be one of the three Israeli obligatory, obligatory uh, works that uh, participants uh, must play at the first or second round. I myself am uh, feeling at home both in the classical and the jazz world. My father is one of the uh, jazz founders uh, of the Israeli jazz scene. 
And this uh, leads me to the special panel that we have today. Uh, it's all about jazz. And I have uh, three fantastic, inspiring jazz pianists with me. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, jazz, creativity, repertoire, um, classical music, influences, etc. So, Jonathan Riklis, Omri Mor, and Tom Oren. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you so, so I think uh, maybe we'll start by introducing, like each, each of you can say a few words about his um, activity as a musician, as pianist, uh, maybe career highlights, or if you can at all categorize your genre or, or style. <coughs> Should I start? Yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, I'm uh, just turn, turned 37. Uh, I'm a jazz pianist for, uh, I guess, like 20 years, even a bit more. Uh, I started uh, with the classical training uh, at the Israeli conservatory. And uh, then uh, my teacher, uh, my, uh, the, kind of my guru, was uh, the late uh, Amit Golan, mm. uh, which, uh, who was my teacher for many years. Uh, then uh, I did um, uh, my first... Uh, uh, studies uh, abroad in the new school. I lived in New York for uh, five years, and uh, you studied jazz there. Studied jazz, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, since then, I'm you know playing uh, a lot in the Israeli jazz scene, uh, which you know became really big and uh, really happening. And uh, I also uh, um, make uh, music uh, for films. Mm. Uh, I was nominated even for uh, the Sapir uh, Awards for uh, two of them. And um, also play the organ, the Hammond organ, is something I also do. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, in a nutshell, nice. that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. We'll ask you more soon. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Omri? Hello, uh, my name is Omri Mo. Uh, I play jazz. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> classical music, uh, mostly at home. Uh, I guess uh, my influences are uh, diverse from uh, ethnical, ethnic music, North African, which I learned with uh, Nino Biton in Jerusalem. And uh, I studied jazz with uh, the late Arnie Lawrence, who uh, uh, spent a lot of his nine, the 90s, uh, in the last century in, uh, mm -hmm. in Israel. I learned classical music with Professor Benjamin Owen and uh, Shoshana Cohen. And uh, I try to combine all of those influences uh, in my, uh, when I write music and when I play. And um, that's it, I guess. Great. Yeah. And Tom? So my name is Tom Oren, and I uh, focus on jazz playing and composition as well, but I've been surrounded by music uh, pretty much since, uh, ever since I can remember. My mother is a musician, Dorley. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've studied uh, for 10 years with Rachel Feinstein, classical piano at the Israeli Conservatory. Uh, and also I got to study with uh, Amrit Golan, who was mentioned here, mm -hmm. and <laughs> this guy right here, Omri. And many different institutions and get like a really extensive and um, um, diverse background and I also try I mean one of the wonderful things about jazz is that how it allows you this platform to express a, a whole picture of who you are as a musician and including <coughs> your influences and they can become an integral part of, uh, of your musical personality so I feel um, that that way I have a way to express my love and uh, connection to classical music even when I'm playing jazz so I feel connected to what you guys said yeah, yeah amazing. So um, I have to ask you, you know, I'm playing jazz myself. I never studied jazz. It was in my house, in my home. Like my yeah. father would play and I listen and then I would just, you know, like imitate and listen to Kid Jarrett and imitate, and etc. And um, I wonder, you said that all of, I mean, I'm not sure, you said also you studied jazz? Yeah. yeah with, with? With Arnie. With Arnie, Arnie yes, was, right. Yeah. So, do you feel like you can really study jazz? I mean, it's a, for me, it's an interesting question because jazz is 
more kind of an exploring your territory and your mind and what do you think about it? I mean, and, and, and following what you said that the Israeli jazz scene now is hot, yeah. not just in Israel, mm. just like in Berkeley, in New York. Uh, does it have to do with the like programs uh, like uh, Telma Elin or Stricker or the Academy or Rimon or, or is it more, I don't know, like just the energy? I think it's definitely connected. Uh, I mean, for me, I know when, you know, Amit started uh, bringing a lot of, uh, you know, the um, kind of the method of uh, Barry Harris uh, yeah. to Israel uh, because he started with him in New York. So it, it made a lot of impact. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the generation, the newer generation, it just became bigger and bigger. And um, I think all the pro programs you mentioned um, are definitely a very, have a, a really important role. Um, having said that, uh, <coughs> I agree with what you said, but I think you, you, you need to study jazz in a way that the teacher is more of a, of a guide. You know, you, 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 get, you need someone to direct you to, the, to, to what you need. But I think... Um, to show you the room, but yeah, you have to explore the room. Exactly, but, yeah. but you also need okay. to know what to explore <laughs> and, and what to, you know, and uh, where to put your concentration. So um, I think really 90%, I don't know if 90%, but is, is just listening, you know, listening to the music and imitating. Mm -hmm. But you need someone to guide you in that uh, exploration. What do you think, Omri? I uh, totally agree with uh, both of you and what, with what Jonathan said. And uh, I think that maybe in the past, um, in the 18th century and uh, 19th century, and maybe in the beginning of the 20th century, the classical education was um, in that way that was less uh, separation between composition, playing music, and improvising music. I mean, for me, the most natural thing to do is to place my hand on the keyboard and to produce sound, what you might call improvisation, because mm -hmm. the notes was, <clears throat> didn't, uh, are not written out. So I think that um, today, um, I mean, the jazz ped pedagogy, that's how you say mm -hmm. it, pedagogy, is based on that more uh, direct contact with the instrument and less emphasis on reading as for classical uh, pianist, they teach them to read the notes, and and I think it's um, it's a shame. It's a pity. That is a shame. It's a pity because um, you get a lot of highly skilled uh, piano players. I'm talking about classical, mm -hmm. but for them, when you when you tell them, can you improvise something? It looks to them like uh, like you're a madman. Yeah. And it wasn't the case. I think you know, in the 19th century, it was obvious that you imp you play. Uh, you know, play uh, pieces by other composers. You compose and you improvise. You're, you're a musician. The whole package. Also, when you have a cadenza. Well, exactly. exactly. Mozart. It's your, it's your cadenza. It's exactly. not. It's not and someone else. The only else's. reason I think Mozart wrote them is for his pupils. Yeah. And he used to <clears throat> to improvise them. So, I think the the jazz education is more uh, like what the classical education used to be in that sense. And for me, there shouldn't be such a separation. I mean, I try. To, to be that musician and I try to, to educate that way. You know, you're a musician, it means you can improvise, you can compose to your level and your skills and you can play other uh, composers' yeah. pieces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tom? Um, well, I mean, of course I agree with the three of you. I just um, have a, an urge to expand on what uh, you said about uh, the benefits of uh, both genres and how they inform each other. Um, I remember it, it was very natural to me how I can sort of incorporate the classical music background, especially works from the Romantic and Modern period, and sort of incorporate them into the improvisation, especially the language, uh, the harmonic language, the rhythmical language. Like DBC and Ravel, everyone, all the jazz, jazz musicians, especially pianists, yeah, definitely. We got uh, hooked on the, uh, but, but of course, but uh, yeah. Right. And uh, um, but it took me a while to understand 
uh, what classical, uh, uh, what my classical playing, um, how it, it benefited from jazz, from the jazz background. And it occurred to me on, uh, uh, at some point uh, that um, since you have a chance again to compose and to compose in the moment, mm -hmm. and you have that spontaneity, that, that quality that enables you to, like you have more of a sense of how to bring life to works that have been played over and over mm -hmm. again for hundreds of centuries and make it sort of your own and give it life every time. So I guess, uh, yeah, there's, the, there's a, a definite benefits to this over, this multidisciplinary. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think also in the process of, uh, for me, you know, and me and, and Omri, we had a collaboration many years ago. She yeah, actually played one of my I works, remember. which is it's titled uh, Mozart Swings. It's written, yeah. written for a jazz trio and an orchestra. It was commissioned nice. by uh, Potsdam Sim uh, Chamber Orchestra and Sim Symphonet Ranana. And uh, it's really in between. It's based all on classical motifs and the um, Mozart uh, symphony um, themes. And uh, there's a lot of room for improvisation. Um, and I think also in improvisation, this is something that interests me asking you, you know, many jazz players uh, can improvise, but sometimes they sound the same because they work on the same riffs, the same licks. And uh, the way I think about it, if you are going towards the classical uh, motif development, then you have something which is more connected mm. and more and like a longer line. Yeah, it's something that you think um, you 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 practice or, or you implement in your the way of uh, improvising. Can uh, I start? Okay, uh, you go, go, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, 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 you go. No, you. Go. <laughs> so I think I mean I think for me, you know it's a language. So I think you can speak it in in many ways. Um, I understand what you're saying. I, I think, you know, every player eventually wants to, you know, to have his own signature sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way it was also, you know, with the master musicians. Yeah, when you're you know. talking about masters, you always have, always have a signature. The problem is not with the masters. <laughs> the the other the, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so that, You know what I mean? It's, it's like composers. You see someone yeah. who is, okay. Yeah. I think, I'm, I mean, I think it's, it's always kind of like uh, you're kind of in the middle because you know you you have like a dream to sound like you know the people you yeah, admire. Okay, I want and, to and sound you want like to Keith Jarrett. Yeah, or something. And and, yeah. and on the other hand, you say, okay, but I'm never gonna be that somebody. I need to be myself. So you you keep searching for your own mm -hmm. sound, and I, I think it's a process. It's a long process. It's it's not like you know, it takes time Wonderful. to get to it. I right. Think. Um, uh, I th could I yeah, yeah, sure. just one more point. I think another benefit of being, you know, of studying classical music uh, is, for instance, when you play uh, the development sections of different sonatas, mm -hmm. and you get a sense of how the composer sort of, also it's kind of like a, a, a frozen improvisation mm -hmm. a lot of times, and it, you see how the composer has, uh, ha has a chance to shed light. Uh, to, to to shed light on uh, on uh, on the theme and and expand on it and continue to tell that story instead of using the theme as an excuse for showing off. Mm. So you have a chance to implement that when you play jazz. You play the head and you want to complement the melody and continue it so that by the time you get the head out, like hearing the theme again at the end of a set of variation, you see all the possibilities and you have a different appreciation of. Yeah. Great. And if I can uh, say also something, mm -hmm. uh, I agree with both of you, uh, but I think, not but, but uh, besides that, I think that when you listen to a, good, a great composer, you mm -hmm. don't want to uh, really know, be aware of that he's developing the theme. You know, if it's too obvious, so it's probably not good. And I think the same about a jazz musician. You know, I, I never, I don't believe in uh, developing uh, motives and being aware of that. I think it's a natural, uh, I mean, it's, part, it's a natural part of, the, mo of uh, the music. Think about this conversation that we're having now. Have we thought about developing? Of course, you have headlines, and it happens naturally because we're in the moment. So I believe the most important thing is to be in the moment, 
and not be occupied with, with motives to develop because it will have it's a result no, being in the moment of what you just played yes that's and what not, i mean yes but not thinking you know about what i mean okay i have an idea let's see how can i push this idea no no forward. no no but stay with me please <laughs> it's if you think about how to develop this motive consciously too much it to me it will not sound natural it, it's a result of other things that you do right such as listening being in the moment uh, keeping the melody in your head you know what I mean so mm -hmm. I don't believe in teaching people to practice on, on developing motives because none of the great masters which I adore do it con consciously you know what I mean well consciously or not this is some, something else I'm talking about the actual the it's, actual it will result happen. You it know will happen I mean? naturally that you s exactly if but, exactly. but then it sounds naturally because you see there's something which is like a letter like exactly you're, you're yeah you're going I'm, from one point to the other and it's all films i don't contradict you yeah. i'm saying yeah. that as a pedagogue mm -hmm. i never teach my students to think about your developing uh, you know devel i mean to a certain degree yes no, i understand like you know the scale you know you play mm -hmm. four four three four whatever i have uh, another question for you guys uh the mindset i mean the preparation when you see a classical pianist going on stage he you know he's well prepared he maybe played it i don't know for a few months each time and many times a, a day and it's almost like a memory master a muscle memory okay mm -hmm. yeah so almost programmed but a jazz musician a you know, jazz pianist when he comes on stage he still has some kind of preparation mental preparation i don't know creative preparation or even actual preparation on written music so what is your boundaries i mean how how risky can you are you willing to be when you go on stage i, I think i mean for me i still remember like you know <laughs> doing like uh you know in the conservatory my teacher uh, my classical teacher was uh, uti tirosh mm -hmm. and she was an amazing teacher and and i, I but I, I still remember, you know, how nervous I was before, you know, the concert, because it, it always feels, and it still feels for me, like I look at the classical, uh, you know, uh, pianist, and I'm saying, like, how can they remember <laughs> everything and, and not make one, one mistake? And, of course, it, it, it takes, you know, preparation, yeah. and, and it, it, in jazz is something, you know, uh, we, of course, we do a lot. I mean, for me, the best preparation is just listening to a lot of, music just listening of course practicing uh, you want to be warmed up on the instrument but but definitely just listening to as much music that that gives me um, you know just uh, inspiration inspiration yeah yeah how is it for you Tom um, oh, yeah. sorry uh, I identified as Tom but <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me uh, I tr I tr um, it's always the balance between being prepared and keep the music fresh. You don't want to be over prepared. And, right. and it's, you mentioned muscle memory, and it's interesting that I heard from my late teacher, Benjamin Oren, that uh, Franz Liszt was brought by his teacher, Czerny, to the great Beethoven. And he played for him uh, Bach, Preludes and Fugues, I don't know. And, and Beethoven asked the young kid, Liszt, can you play it in a different scale? So it's. Okay. Wow. Anyway, sorry. Um, he asked the young list to play it in different keys, which means it's not only muscle memory, yeah. but he actually you know the to. music. Yeah. So that's what jazz pianist does uh, do, and uh, yeah. yeah. I think. Are, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah. We could sit here for an hour and a half more. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Jonathan Riklis, Omri Moore, Tom Moran. And uh, yeah, well thank God. you, guys. Thank you.
ברוכים השבים, לא ברוכים הטלפונים, אני מזכירה לכם, תודה. ברוכים השבים למקצה הראשון, ביום השני של השלב השני בתחרות רובינשטיין השבע עשרה, כאן באולם ריקנטי של מוזיאון תל אביב לאומנות. Welcome back to the Tel Aviv Museum of Art, Rubinstein competition number 17. And it's stage two, second day. Tomorrow is the last day for stage two. A lot will be happening. And now we're ready for the next competitor. Please take your seats and please, please, you can speak while I'm speaking. This is bearable, but not when the competitor goes up the stage. And I will now present her. Yukine Kuroki from Japan. She's 24. Her recital program will begin with Haydn, Sonata in D major, Hoboken 16, number 37. Continue with Mendelssohn Rachmaninov, Scherzo from A Midsummer Night's Dream, Chalom Lil Kites. The Israeli piece, Tal Chaim Samnon, Memory and Variations. And the last will be least, Sonata in B minor, Searle, 178. Please welcome Yukine Kuroki.